Hi everybody, this is Doug Keller coming to you from Yoga U with a short tutorial on working with the arms and the elbows in a downward facing dog pose. And just to understand what the rotation of the elbows is or should be, and also how to work with the problem of hyperextension, which is quite common in the elbows. It tends to make the elbows a little bit unstable and also put undue pressure on the wrists as well as the shoulders. To understand it, we have to look at the forearm at the bones of the forearm and how the hand rotates. This is a right hand here, set up like this. And you can see there are two bones of the forearm. The interesting thing about the two bones is each bone is big on one end and small on the other. And a principle of bones is where they're weight bearing, they become large. And when they're not intended to be weight bearing, they tend to become small to allow movement and refinements of movement. So when we look at the wrist, we can see the radius, the bone that actually rotates around the other bone, is at its biggest at the wrist, and that bone essentially lines up with the mound of the index finger. So when we place the hand, we tend to emphasize putting weight on the mound of the index finger to transfer that weight directly into the radius to maintain the strength of the, of the wrist. By the same token, as you follow the radius down to its other end at the elbow, it becomes a rather small bone that has room to rotate around the elbow, so it's rather unstable at the elbow itself. The other bone is the ulna, which we kind of know as the point of the elbow right here, the large bone at the elbow, and you can see how it very directly connects to the humerus as a kind of hinge. It's a very strong large bone, which is designed to bear weight, but once again, as we follow the bone up to the other end, this is the part at the outer part of the wrist here, which once again is a very small bone with a lot of space in the joint allowing for movement, so the ulna itself is not really designed to bear weight at the outer part of the wrist. Each bone by itself doesn't do very well as a weight-bearing bone, so the question is, when we do put weight on our arms, like a downward-facing dog pose or even a handstand, how is it that the forearm is strong enough to bear that weight? Well, the wisdom of the body is that it takes the two bones and twists each one over the other. So, for instance, when the arm is on the floor in a Pinchamarasana position, you can see how the radius turns over the ulna, and essentially the two bones combine forces to become one strong bone. Now, there has to be an ideal rotation to these two bones in order for the wrist to hold the weight efficiently. When the arm is properly rotated, this part right here is the crease of the elbow, which I'll speak of as the eye of the elbow that we see as the crease. When the arm is vertical in a neutral position, like being on hands and knees, the ideal rotation between the radius and the ulna is that that crease essentially points towards the thumb at about 45 degrees. So when I place the hands with the wrists parallel, it's this position here. Neither turning too far forward, no too far back. This allows me to put weight upon the hand properly. When people have very tight shoulders and it's hard to get that rotation, it's fine to turn the hand out slightly to allow the elbow to rotate forward, and then that helps to rotate and open up the shoulder. The bigger problem comes when the ligaments of the elbow are loose or flexible, it allows the ulna to actually move just a little bit too far, popping forward like that, which is essentially hyperextension of the elbow. If the elbow turns too far forward, it not only over-rotates the upper arm, but destabilizes the elbow, jamming the elbow, as well as putting weight on the weak part of the wrist. How we control that hyperextension actually comes from the bicep muscle, where the bicep muscle attaches essentially to the ulna right here, up to the shoulder, and helps us to bend the elbow in this way. When you rotate the forearm, the radius crosses over the bicep muscle. And if there's no tone in the bicep muscle, then the arm becomes mobile in the direction of moving towards hyperextension like that. So the trick for getting the arms to work properly is to maintain tone of the bicep to limit how far the ulna can rotate. So for somebody who hyperextends to come on to hands and knees, Instead of the elbows turning and locking forward like this, we can bend the elbows slightly, 
and make a little muscle with the biceps as I press down through the mound of the index fingers, pull the hands towards each other to engage the biceps, and then pressing through the mound of the index finger, start to straighten the arms, allowing the elbows to turn, but only until it's about 45 degrees. As long as the bicep has tone, the elbow can't turn further. So the trick is to bend the elbows, press through the mounds of the index fingers, engage the biceps, and as you press through the mounds of the index fingers, start to bring the elbows in, rotating, but only to 45 degrees, and the tone of the bicep prevents the arm from rotating further into hyperextension. So even in downward facing dog pose where the elbows tend to lock, if I bend the elbows, ground the mounds of the index fingers, and then engage the biceps, kind of pull the hands towards each other, and then reach through the arms, maintaining the tone of the biceps, the arms will rotate properly, and as long as the biceps are toned and index finger grounded, you won't go so far as to lock or hyperextend. The bicep works against that hyperextension. That allows the upper arm to maintain the proper rotation, the hand to maintain the weight upon the hand, and the elbow to stay stable so that the arms remain strong. For the rest of us, getting the proper rotation is even a little bit simpler. When we stretch back and often the arms rotate down too much instead of rotating out too much in hyperextension, a simple fix for us is to bend the elbows out to the sides. Once again, you can engage the bicep, but just think of swinging the elbows towards each other just 45 degrees. So I set up here, and as I straighten the arms, I can lengthen back, and in downward facing dog pose, the elbows face towards each other. And I can feel how the arms turn as I shift forward to a plank. The arms are 45 degrees like this. As I shift back, they face towards each other. As long as I pay attention to that rotation of the arms and maintain some tone in the biceps, this allows the arms to rotate smoothly in the shoulders. And I don't have to worry if I have to rotate the arms out more or less. The very action of the arms controls the movement of the shoulders and keeps the shoulders nice and open and the chest broad. So that's a little tutorial to play with as far as the positioning of the elbows and working with the tone of the arms to find the rotation of the arms that works best in downward facing dog pose. Thanks for joining me.